it is now time for the Port Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 12 of the Port Podcast. We have a really great episode for you today. We have the executive director from United Way. Welcome to the show, Alexia. Thanks so much for having Thank me. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming on. I know it's been a while. We've been really excited to talk to you and about what United Way has been doing and how Craig and the team have been affiliated. So we're really excited to have you on the show today. I'm very excited to be here. And thank you all for joining us. If you've listened or you've tuned in watching, uh, thank you so much. Um, if you listened to our last few episodes, we definitely appreciate it. We hope that you're learning lots. If you have any questions or comments or maybe a guest that you'd like to see on the show, make sure to send us a note. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, I want to I want to dive in a little bit um, about today's episode. Um, United Way is a really, really integral uh, organization here, um, not just in St. John, but across the globe. And I really want to talk a little bit about what you... Um, and your role are doing and what United Way is doing. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to share a bit about what we're doing. Um, we we always say that what we do is, is simple in some ways because ultimately what we're trying to do is help people. So that's right. the, that's sort of our one single goal is to really help the people in, in our community. Um, and how we do that is where it starts to get a little more complex. Right. Um, and it's not just as simple as, uh, you know, just making sure people have food. It's uh, it's a little more complex than that. But ultimately what we're trying to do is meet the needs of our community. So right. it's very hyper local. It's really about what are the needs here for us that goes all the way down to St. Stephen. So into Charlotte County and all the way up to Sussex and Kings County. So what are the needs in our local community and how can we meet those? And then the other piece of it is trying to help solve some of the complex social issues that are facing our community. So we do that in a couple of ways. So most people know us as a fundraiser, we're out in the community, we're raising money, uh, and then we in turn become a funder and we give that money back out to, to the community to, you know, usually 20 or so organizations that are, we call our funded partners. Okay. Um, so most people know that about us, but the other piece that the solving complex social issues piece is the piece that people are maybe a little less familiar um, with that side of our work. And that's really where we are trying to um, first of all, support those funded partners. So we, we, we call them funded partners for a reason because we don't just hand write a check and say, okay, we're done. But we really feel like we're a part, we're very invested in, in their solutions and helping support them with leadership training um, and uh, workshops and anything that can help build their capacity and make sure that they're strong and resilient. And then also just meeting with people to, f to bring the right people to the table to try to solve some of the issues. Housing is a massive issue. So what can United Way do in that role? How, who can we bring together to help find uh, those solutions? Funders, the people, on, the boots on the ground that are doing the work, whatever that might be, sort of just convening those tables is a really big part of what we do as well. Well, that's, it, it just brings me to the, the next kind of flow of the topic because I feel like sometimes um, those, those social economic issues are, are big and they, they do take a lot of feet on the ground and, and eyes on the paper. But there can be a lot of duplicate duplicate effort if communication isn't happening around the table. So, what is it that makes a strategic partnership with stakeholders, with the port, for example, um, so successful? Yeah, I think that that that's one of the things. So, I probably one of my biggest pet peeves is the duplication of efforts. When right. you know, I we. I always say nobody is in this sector with ill intentions. I mean, maybe occasionally there's one or two people, but for the most yeah. part, people are in this with great intentions. But a lot of times people come in with a great idea and try to put a solution in place without looking at the landscape to see yeah. who else is in this space already doing this work. Who can we partner with? And that would be like a really big place that United Way plays as well. I constantly get people calling me and being like, hey, I'm going to start a charity. And I usually say, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, let's take a pause. Who's doing work in this area already that you can complement that work? Right. Or what values or like what resonates with you as a company and where should you maybe put resources? Yeah. Yeah. And I think so that that leads into like how the port is supporting. So when a company is supporting through United Way, we're doing that work. We're making sure that we're not funding those solutions that are maybe a duplication of another effort. Yep. We're making sure that the all the money that is coming through us is being invested in the organizations that are really having the biggest impact and really moving that needle on those social issues. You know, I, I just have a, qu a quick anecdote to, to add. You know, you, you talked about, you know, 
the great work you guys do solving the complex issues, but but you guys are so helpful across the board. And one one real lesson that, that I took home last year was we had a couple of employees very well intended that wanted to do a food drive mm-hmm. because that's something you, you know food security coming mm-hmm. out of COVID obviously very important. We actually during the pandemic transformed one of our cruise terminals into uh, into a place where the five priority neighborhoods could come and 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 get food and, and it was almost a warehousing uh, mm-hmm. space. So food security is really top of mind for our employees. And, and and through a conversation you and I had, uh, you helped us do that program because oftentimes good intention yields something that is not quite what what you would expect. Maybe share a little bit about yeah. what you do, even on that. Sm- even no, that's yeah. not a complex issue. It's a it's a it's it, it's it's a relatively common uh, effort, a food drive. But you, but you're helping put innovation into that too. Yeah. So this is one of my. I have to be careful because you you just hit one of my soapbox issues. So I'm gonna try not to get full on my soapbox. Get on that soapbox. <laughs> get on. Yep. Uh, I, uh, food security is definitely one of those issues for me where there's really only one solution to food security and that's increased income. So that's the only thing that's really going to solve food security in a, in a real way in our community. However, there's still, we still need food banks. We still need food drives. It's a part of, it is a part of the supports that are there for people. But one of the, uh, one of the examples I give is uh, there was a time where, uh, where an organization did a big food drive for cereal. They, they collected thousands of boxes of cereal. It was a great initiative. And I guarantee you every single person that came and delivered a box of cereal, got that dopamine hit. They felt good. They're yeah. like, yeah, I'm helping my community. Um, a few months later, I happened to be at one of the schools that was one of the beneficiaries of the cereal. And I was in this tiny little kitchen that they have, and there was cereal stacked to the ceiling. And I said, what is going on in here? Where did all this come from? And they said, oh, this is from this drive. And I said, oh, how wonderful. They're like, yeah, except we can't use any of it. So over half of the cereal they received, they couldn't use because it either had nuts in it or it didn't meet the nutrition um, policy of the school. And they weren't even allowed to sort of give that cereal out to families because they had this nutrition policy. So I think it's a really great example of how great intentions Mm -hmm. and all the people who supported it felt really good, but did it really meet the need? So one of the things we launched um, last year was something called special initiatives. So what we've tried to do is go out to the the not-for-profits and say, what is it that you actually need? So a great example of that would be the Teen Resource Center. Mm -hmm. They provide snacks for their kids that are coming to their tutoring program or their after-school program. And they created an actual curated list. These are the things that we actually need. After school snacks, you know, granola bars, mm-hmm. applesauce, the, a, an actual list of those things. And so what we'll do if a company wants to do a drive like that for something is we will connect them up to one of these initiatives and say, great, please collect these exact things. We'll give them the poster. It's all set up and organized so that they can do that and make sure that the items that are being delivered to that organization are, are what they need and are really meeting the real need. Because honestly, as a teenager, I don't really want kidney beans or artichoke hearts or, you know, so you got to really think about that list and curate what they need. Because again, yeah, the yeah. intention, if the intention is to make sure that we're giving snacks and food in an educational setting, then you need to make sure that it is hitting that nutri- nutritional yeah. value. So I think that's really important. And have you seen more of... Um, an adoption of that from the organizations that you're working with? Yeah, we've had a great uptick in it. Actually, we did a really cool project uh, last year, Aquila. Well, I know one of your partners yep. here at the port, they um, were doing celebrating their 40th anniversary and they said we, we wanted, they wanted there to be multifacets to the way that they were giving back to the community. And okay. one of the parts of their, they called it their four for 40. Uh, one of the things was they wanted to give back some food. So they actually did partner with us. We went to the Teen Resource Center and we said, hey, what, what do you need? They support a lot of kids who are in, um, uh, in housing. So they, um, they were like, you know, but this is what our kids really want. They want like pasta, pasta sauce, mm-hmm. right? Like these granola bars, these things. And so we, they put together 40 bags of food that had the specific requirements around what the kids that were going to be receiving mm-hmm. them had given them the input to say this is what we, that, what we use and what we want. What have been some of the highlights this year for United Way? Yeah, well, so we're we're just we're just sort of uh, only like a month and a bit, I guess, into our into this year's campaign. But I would say in the last year, for sure, one of the biggest highlights for us is we definitely had one of our biggest campaigns that we've had oh, um, last year. So we raised over over one point seven million dollars, which is huge. Oh. Uh, ooh, ooh. 
Oh, hold, the, hold the applause. Know, we got to talk about this year's right. campaign yeah. in a minute. <laughs> exactly. Jeez, I hope you have a bigger applause. You're, for the, you just wait for it. Oh, yeah, just wait for she, it. She's building yeah. up expectation now. I don't know. Okay. We have a bell at our office, so whenever like anybody gets a, the, you know gets a gift, the bell gets rung. It's pretty exciting uh, in our office. Um, I think one of the really cool things, so uh, that meant we were able to invest more in the community. Ultimately, that's what it means. So I think our community for years has talked about United Way about how much money we raise. But for me, I don't really, I know this sounds terrible, but I don't really care how much money we raise. I do, Craig. Hmm. It's going to get to that in a minute. Yeah, but um, but it, for us, it's about what's the impact we're exactly. able to have right. with that. So yeah. that we were able to have, give out the most amount of money we had ever given to our funded partners last important. year as well. So that that's, that's a, a really important piece. One of the other really cool, highlights um, from last year. It's actually was our second year. So we piloted a project. So another one of our um, partners, Amara, partnered with us to pilot a program called United for Success Awards. And this was something we did kind of quietly the first year. We partnered with uh, three of our funded partners who all have it as part of their mandate to help youth transition and adults transition to post-secondary education. And uh, I de- we had identified that there was a need to help remove barriers to that. So a lot of times, you know, we know at higher education is expensive um, and oftentimes bursaries and scholarships check certain help with certain things mm-hmm. um, but there's other expenses things like your internet that you might mm-hmm. not think about that you couldn't afford um, child care mm-hmm. or just but being able to buy groceries just so that, barriers real yeah, real barriers. barriers yeah so yeah. we created a program um, and we piloted out it was pretty small the first year we gave out about seven of those awards so that was up to two thousand dollars per individual that got that award and that could be used to address whatever their particular barrier was in in partnership with their friend funded partner because again that ongoing support is a really key piece of that as well uh and then this year or the second year which would have been this past year um we gave out i think 21 of those awards and the results wow were that fen- number went up quick. yeah the, wow. the results were Seven phenomenal so i think wow. 19 of those 21 completed their year of post-secondary which is That's huge amazing. yeah wow. and the things buying people buying you know laptops but also like there was one individual who she spoke at our kickoff two years ago um, we paid for her internet. She was doing an online course. She's now working full time um, with Brennan's as a funeral director. Oh, but that's fantastic! That paid for two years. She got this bursary and that, or this sorry award. We call it an award, um, so that she didn't have to worry about paying for her um, tuition. So that's one of our things Incredible. that we're like really proud of. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just wanna I wanna take a step back for a second. Mm-hmm. So growing up, I I've always known what United Way was, and then as I got a little bit older and I started you know working and I would see the different fundraisers come through or the option for to opt in through my paycheck. Um, as I got a little bit older and I started working at other organizations, there were more um, like. The million dollar pledge what is the state of how people can get involved with united way is it is it simply maybe i have an idea about something i want to do maybe it's a food drive i can call you maybe my organization wants to get involved at a higher level like maybe with the port i can call you but are there some other opportunities that people could maybe call in that maybe they're not thinking that you might not be the person to call because i've just listening to hear you talk i can already think of four or five people that should be calling united way just even have a, a quick couple minutes to, to see what they're doing and how you guys might be able to help. Yeah. So this ties exactly into what I was saying when I say the number of what we raise is just a number. It's really about the impact we can have. And so if we can help influence, that's a part of our goal is influencing other people to give. So it doesn't mean it has to flow through us, right. but we consider ourselves like, you know, you know, experts in this field and experts yeah. about what's happening. And so we provide lots of advice and direction and connections, not just to the not-for-profit sector, but also to the business community. So I think the Million Dollar Pledge is a great example of that. It's a, you know, this is in its seventh year, I think this year, a group of 10 businesses have each committed to giving uh, $10,000 a year to give a million dollars. They They have really focused their giving on specifically on um, helping youth succeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where they've narrowed in on. But our goal is to help organi- businesses achieve their charitable objectives. Uh, objectives sorry, And um, that is going to look different for everybody. It's going to depend on what, what types of things they're trying to achieve. So it could be a partnership like we have with St. John Energy, where they are like, listen, our goal is to reduce poverty in St. John. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly aligned with United Way. So we're just going to get you to invest on our behalf right. and take all that off the table for them. They I mean, know you guys are the thought leaders. You know what people need. That's right. So why why would yeah. they take that on? Yeah, and they were spending a ton of time around boardroom tables making $1,000 decisions yeah. 
that weren't getting them the impact, you know, the impact that they were trying to get. They were all over the place. So we can help people narrow in. So I can, I can sit down with a company and help walk them through a very simple, um, sort of social purpose, um, thinking to, to, to figure out which direction they should go in. And again, if that means coming and investing through United Way, if that's the right fit, great, we'll help you do that. But if the right fit is, you know, if, if you're, a pet food company, like mm-hmm. that might not be the right fit for you. The might, right fit for you might be directing you to somewhere that would be a more, more of a better fit for your, for your own corporate social um, goals. What, what about as individuals? Mm. We've got some pretty interesting programs for uh, individuals that, or, or couples or families that may want to donate. Yeah. So our, a lot of our, so we kind of have, we've tried to diversify over the years. So payroll deduction is like, that's what we were built on. 60, I think we're 65 years now that we've been around. And, and I think the, I was, I was looking through an old scrapbook um, last year and, and the campaign tagline was give your fair share, which mm. is a terrible, like, a, like, a, like I, it was an interesting tagline. Um, but I think that's really what, we, that's how pretty much all of our money came through the door. And now what we've really tried to do is make sure that there's opportunities for everybody to give. So we um, do have a lot of our, uh, about 20% of our money actually comes from our leadership donors. So those would be individuals, whether they're giving through the workplace or at, just as an individual right. that give $1,200 or more. Um, and then we also spun off our um, uh, million dollar pledge. So we, we had one of the port employees actually was really involved in helping us spin that off. They were like, you know, hey, we've, we've got a, a business. We're not quite million dollar pledge ready, mm-hmm. but we really want to help out. We really like the impact that they're having. And so we spun off the, the quarter club, which is a $2,500 commitment. Um, and that, that group is really focused on the mental health and intimate partner violence kind of bucket of the work that we do. Um, but really there's, I think what we can help, I always say when I talk to individuals, again, it's about supporting the community Mm -hmm. in a way that's meaningful for you. And Mm -hmm. so if I was sitting and having a coffee with you and you're like, geez, I'm not sure, you know, where I'd like to give, but you grew up going to the, to BGC and B that's where your heart is. And I'd be like, great, you should support BGC. That sounds like the perfect fit for you. But if you're a person that's, that's trying to figure out where should I give that's going to have the most impact and I just don't know and I don't have the time to do all the research, I think that's where United Way can really help individuals meet that, that mm-hmm. objective because right. we're going to make sure that that money is invested for impact. We're going to make sure the due diligence is done. We're going to make sure we're getting the reporting back and we're going to make sure we support that investment as well. And I think um, United Way as a whole has always done such a great job letting people know what you do, what you stand for, what opportunities you can volunteer at, how you can get involved. And I think it's just um, a matter of like, you know, bringing the community along more for that journey so that they know how to be involved. Because if you're not in a place, maybe you're unemployed and you don't have an opportunity to do payroll deductions. Maybe you're not your own company and you can't do that. There's still lots of opportunity. And I feel it brings me to my question, um, Craig, like I know, like myself, you've lived here your whole life and Mm -hmm. you know the state of our our city and I know that you really care about that so what what is what is it that made you want to be part of being part of United Way both from a personal perspective but then also from a stakeholder perspective at the port when I was going to say the highlight the third highlight was that Craig accepted to be the chair of our 2023 community campaign we're at that portion of that uh, (laughs) oh come on that wasn't as loud as the other one I'm just kidding no I I mean I uh, that's a that's a kind of a multi- facet answer I'm going to give you on that one. So I, I, I got to interact with the, with the United Way, uh, you know, kind of a, a number of years ago. I've, I've tried to volunteer my time over the last, you know, 10, 12 years. I've been back in St. John to different uh, not-for-profits, and, and, and you obviously gravitate to ones you've, you've worked with the longest. Uh, so I had an opportunity to work with two different groups, um, the, the St. John Learning Exchange mm-hmm. and then uh, Living SJ when it was, when it was um, still in operation. That was an overarching uh, network of individuals sharing best practices, and uh, Alexia and I got to, got to serve on, um, uh, in a couple of different capacities and, and, and meet each other through a Living St. John. But really, my, my foray into the uh, United Way was through the Learning Exchange, who's one of the groups that uh, uh, benefits greatly and appreciates deeply the, uh, the support that uh, the United Way has provided them. Um, it's wraparound services for youth, uh, social enterprise, uh, for those, uh, we've talked about the you know, a learning yeah. exchange a lot on this podcast. So I think people are familiar with it. So, um, 
you know, I just look at what the United Way has done through through Alexia and her predecessor, Wendy McDermott, who I got to know really well in, in, in the early days as well. And uh, I, I just think that the need in this community is is tremendous. And, um, and, and, and I really love the thought leadership, as you mentioned earlier, about what you provide and, and, and making sure that the dollars we spend or the time we volunteer is going for going, you know, kind of really going towards active change and, and, and actually helping because uh, so many times you can have good intentions, as we right. mentioned earlier, but, yeah. but it may not be yielding the results that we want to get. And you guys are so focused on getting results and actually telling stories of individuals um, who have overcome so much. And I think that's what drew me so much to the United Way and to the Learning Exchange. So I'm excited to be uh, chair of the capital campaign, and hopefully we can we can raise a little bit of money and Kate can continue the, yeah. the, the, yeah. Loud, yeah. the, the loud We'll make clap. it extra loud extra. this time. Yeah, that's right. You step it up a notch. Yeah. No, and I think it's so important um, for people to – maybe take away the the ego sometimes when you're wanting to do something. Because even myself in marketing with ideas, sometimes if I want to create something, I'll ask other people in my field or I'll ask other content creators because I don't want to, one, make a lot of mistakes or to put a lot of my time or other people's times into something that could be more efficient and have a better impact. So I think even just having a a phone call or an email like with your team if you're a business or an individual or somebody just looking um, for a way to be involved with United Way I think just having that call and understanding about what what are your values what what is a, what what is your bandwidth right now what is your financial investment and if there is none I'm sure there's lots of different ways that people can still get involved and I really that's always been what I've felt resonated with me with United Way is that there's always been a way to be involved no matter what your purchasing power might be or right. what your giving power might it's be. It's the give your fair share model. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and I and, and with maybe better branding. with better with branding, better branding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, I have another question. Yeah. Do you do you find um, part of your job to be um, difficult? And the reason why I ask that is because people who tend to care tend to care a lot. And it, do you do you take that home with you? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I yes, we de we definitely take it home with us. I think we. I have the great fortune of being. Um, as a as sort of a funder and a supporter of the frontline work that's being done, and because of the structure we have set up, where we're constantly getting, I brought with me a whole like packet of like impact stories. We tend to see and hear the success stories just because of the nature of the partnership that we're in. Right. Um, and so I think um, that gives gives energy. That you know that that brings energy in mm -hmm. and keeps me you know coming back to work every day. Um, the fact that there's so much great work happening in the community and not all of it is all of it is in our lane. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that weighs heavy on me when when I have that meeting. So again, when you're talking about the different stakeholders, um, you know, we can help the individuals, we can help the businesses, but also the the people who are working in the not for profit sector right. come to us and look for our advice or look for funding, and they're not in our lane. And it's really hard to say no to people. It's really important to say no to, it's really important to have a lane. That's one of the big things that yeah. we talk about to make so that we know what we should be. But when there's really great people sitting across the table from you that are really passionate and their needs that maybe aren't being met, but it's not in our lane, I think that's, um, that, that's hard mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, from time to time. And also I think I was, um, you've met Juanita Black. Everybody oh, yeah. knows Juanita Black legend. in our community. Yeah, she's a legend. I was just at a, a retirement party for one of our, our volunteers from social development that was retiring, Debbie McLeod. Oh, Do you yeah. know Debbie? Yep. And Juanita was there and I was chatting with her and she is still so invested oh, in United sweet. Way, which yeah. is so, like, she spoke at our kickoff, I think seven or eight years ago because her son benefited from United Way funding when he was a kid. And then when she got her first job, like the first thing she did was fill out that pledge form for United Way. Awesome. And so she's still so invested uh, in how United Way is doing. She feels like she's a part of it. And I think her message really was that everybody can give, you know, like you said, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be $10,000. Right. It, it can be a dollar a paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. And that, but you're still putting it in, helping us create a really big pot where we can give sizable investments. I think that's a big piece that differentiates us as well is we want to help ensure the stability of those organizations. So we want to give an organization, you know, a, a $50,000 grant so they can just focus on doing their work rather than focusing on 
going out trying to get a thousand dollars here and a thousand dollars there, right? right? Which is takes an incredible amount of time and takes away from them delivering on their their mandate. I I totally went off on a tangent. No, there. but no, no. I, <laughs> I really appreciate it, and I, I feel like your entire business model has shifted because of that. And and the reason why I asked if it was almost because you become consultants and advisors in that space on top of running United Way as a business. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> it? It can be, but for the most part, again, it's, we, we have such great partners that are doing such incredible work. And so when you, you know, read about the kid that jumped the kid on the front of this page who, who got 20 skills and who jumped a grade level in his reading mm-hmm. because of a program that we funded, you're like, okay, I'm going to, I can keep doing this another day. And I'm, I'm going to say it cause I, yeah. I want you to read one I of those. I want some more stories yeah, too. Okay. But yeah. one of the things that I think that can happen, and we've mentioned this too, whether it be about cruise, when we see something or if we hear it a lot, we can think, oh, things are fine. It's fine. So United Way, we might see stuff going on in social. So they're fine. They've got enough money. We don't need to help them. But I think there's so much in between that, that gap right there that can help make these impact stories. And I think we need to share a couple of them so that we understand what the reality of that help and what those impact pledges are from those businesses. So would you be open to share a couple? Uh, absolutely. This is, um, this is one of my, I, I shouldn't say that my, it's a new favorite, but because we just got a whole host of new stories in. Um, but this is a story from, um, a child who, um, was living with uh, their mother at uh, Second Stage. So again, a lot of people don't know Second Stage is an organization that is in the intimate partner violence space, but they really are about long-term um, breaking the cycle mm-hmm. of, of domestic violence. Um, so you pe- well, women can stay there for a longer period of time until they get on their feet and get to that next step. Um, and they have a tremendous track record of, of doing that. I th- they have 90% of the women who live there are oh, wow. violence-free after 12 months, still living violence-free, not in a new relationship or have returned to that. That's a huge that is big, um, yeah. stat in that space. So this is one, cho- one, one story. I love my new house. When we lived in our old apartment, there was a lot of fighting and it would scare me and my brother. After we moved to second stage, I feel better and happier. I love the games and meetings with the staff. I started counseling with the staff to help me feel safe, talk about my feelings and make friends. I have met many new friends at second stage. At my old apartment, people weren't allowed to come over. We didn't go many places. At second stage, my new friends are allowed to come over and play. My mom loves our new house. She is happier now. She started a new job and has new friends, and she has taken my brother and I to many fun places. Like, that's why we do what we do. Yeah. (laughs) A lot. But I think it's it's so so critical to share those things because that actually puts um, a face to the change that you are making and that the people that are in individuals, businesses, stakeholders that actually take the time to make that commitment. Yeah, and I think the thing we're, our lane, when I say we have this specific lane, our lane really is about that systemic change. Mm -hmm. So we, even though I was on my soapbox about food security, that, that, for us, food security is built in to all of the programs we fund. I would say 80% of the programs that we fund ha- are addressing food security in some way, but they are doing it while providing those wraparound supports that are going to help. So if you're at second stage, you're not going to go hungry while you're there. They're mm-hmm. taking care of that food security mm-hmm. piece, but you're in counseling. You have access to PTSD support groups. You have access to a counselor that's helping you get back into uh, to get to get your credit back, to go to university if you haven't done that or finish your GED, to really break that cycle and move forward. And I think that's one of the things that also differentiates us because we're not funding the Band-Aid solutions. Mm-hmm. Those, I think, again, are those are the things that are easy for people to understand. And that's when we started this conversation. I said, like, what we do is simple. We help people. And how we do it is a bit more complicated right. because helping somebody at the learning exchange, you know, you know this from from being on the board, takes a, a tremendous amount more funding to invest in somebody for six months, maybe two years to help them get their GED or their adult high school diploma. But the difference that is going to make in breaking that cycle of generational poverty that we have in this community is worth every investment um, versus, you know, maybe just being like, well, here's a bag of groceries for this week. Mm-hmm. You know, people need that, but that's not what we're investing in. We're investing in those things that are really breaking that cycle 
And, uh, and for me, it's treating the learners and, and, and the children, like you just mentioned in your story, like you'd treat your own kids. It's not a straight line. There's, there's ups, there's downs, right. there's ups and downs in all of our lives. So why would we treat any learner or someone going through these programs any different? I, you know, too often, I think, you know, groups in the past would panic one, one false step. Oh, that's not working. Yeah. This is a long journey. A it's long, a long, journey. long journey. Yeah. And it's a community wide journey. I think that's the other, um, piece. Like we can be passionate about, like I said, if I met with you and you're like, oh, I went to BGC growing up and I'd be like, great, throw your support behind that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, nobody is getting the support that they need to break the cycle of poverty, the cycle of intimate partner violence to address their mental health or addictions challenges with one organization. Mm -hmm. Like it really does take a whole village and that that we need that whole village to be strong we need when um you know when a young mom has no place to live and they go to live at first steps and first steps is going to provide incredible supports to that woman they're going to help them continue their education in the basement their daycare on the main floor but Sophia Recovery comes into that organization yep. and provides support to those women to help them maintain their recovery from addictions if they if they had an addiction coming in Though, you know, their, their kids might be participating in other programs that are off offered elsewhere. So it really does take, it's a whole suite. Like it's, we can't just fund one organization and expect that they're going to solve mm -hmm. everything. So yeah, we get to the portion of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We've heard these great stories. We know the need. We know the why. We've talked about last year's capital campaign. You and I are coming after all sorts of business leaders, individuals, $1 pledges, quarter <laughs> club, million dollar We're pledge. We're coming for you. Yeah. We are coming <laughs> with an aggressive letter writing campaign, personal phone calls. Uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, kind of a pitch to the, to, the, to the folks at the chamber at an upcoming uh, luncheon as well. Uh, so we just want to put everyone on notice that uh, we want to we want to raise a tremendous amount of money for our community this year. We're the, asking. <laughs> we're asking. The timing's right. Uh, 2023 is a year of, of great need uh, across the board, and we need to we need to do our best to match that need. So you're going to hear from me personally, yeah. and you're going to hear from some of my colleagues at the port as well, and you're going to hear from Alexia, Joanne, and the tremendous team at the United Way. Yeah, and we're happy to sit down and have a deeper, longer conversation. I mean, it's, for some people, it's an easy yes, and for mm -hmm. other people, it might not be. Um, if people want to understand some of the different ways that they can get involved, we're happy to sit down and have that um, conversation. And we do promise, even though Craig's going to put some pressure on, um, we do promise that we're not a hard sell, you know, organization. Like I, I, I've said again and again, probably too many times now, our, um, our goal is for us to have a strong community sector. And so we're not going to mm -hmm. keep you t like tied in the room until, until you say yes, but we're going to just, we just want to start those conversations and make sure that that even helps us sometimes if we know this organization is really putting a lot of funding into a certain area. You, we know we talked about gaps. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, well, maybe that is well funded and maybe we can direct our funding somewhere else. So that helps us as well. But I will say that, that every dollar does count. Like mm -hmm. that's, I think the thing that, um, that model that we were built on, even though that is only a portion now of where our money comes from, that pay for, payroll deduction is about 40% of the, what the money that comes to United Way now. Um, but those, everybody giving that little bit of what they can mm -hmm. really does um, make a huge uh, difference in our campaign. So there's a way for everybody to get involved and we're happy to help people find that. And we're happy to have people like Craig helping us make some new connections. And, uh, and of course, for all the people who've been supporting us for years and years and years, we, we, we couldn't be here without them for sure. And where can people find more information about what is going on, how to get involved, how to potentially talk with you personally? Where can the people find that information? So for sure, our website is our like no, is our number one spot, I would say. So unitedwaystjohn.com is our uh, website. But also, I think probably like our LinkedIn page and our Facebook page is where we're most active. So if you want to know what's going on, one of the really great things we have coming up is a board governance workshop. Um, so for anybody who's either sitting on a board or is thinking about sitting on a board, we have a great workshop we're actually offering in, in all three communities. So there's three opportunities to go. Oh, that's great. That is a like it's just an absolutely essential thing for to make sure the organizations that are in this community are strong they need to have strong board members yep. so we've got that coming up as well and all the information's both on our website and on and our facebook as well well that's great well thank you so much for thank joining you. that was a really great conversation i learned a lot and my brain just 
was going all over the place when I was thinking about like your, your day to day, because even in hearing you talk about Sophia recovery and first steps, and I just, I see you bringing in multiple organizations to get them to talk and make their impact even bigger. So it's like the job never really ends, does it? Oh no, it never no. ends. That there's, it's just really, it's about capacity and right. how much time yeah. can we get done all the things that we want to get done. So sometimes we do have to prioritize, right. but there's never a lack of ideas and projects and ways that we can support our organizations and right. our community. Well, thank you everybody for joining in for episode 12 of the Port Podcast. We hope that you enjoyed the show and until next time, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. 